You've probably heard about the Aztecs. They lived in central Mexico from the 14th to the 16th century. For almost two centuries, the Aztec Empire was a mighty power that conquered territories and developed agriculture and the economy. Knowing the full strength of this state, it's hard to believe that in Mexico, next to the Aztecs, there was a small tribe, the Purupechas, which the Aztecs couldn't conquer. But why? Let's first understand why the Aztecs were so strong. One of the main secrets of the Aztec power was the Valley of Mexico. Whoever owned this territory was in luck. Thing is, there's favorable soil in this valley, as well as many sources of fresh water. The Aztecs had never been hungry thanks to this rich land. Corn, beans, pumpkins, tomatoes, chili peppers, fruits, and berries, you name it, it was all there in unlimited quantities. On this land, the Aztecs practiced an unusual method of farming, chinampa. These were essentially floating islands on which people grew food. Large fresh lakes provided people with clean water all year round. An unlimited supply of food and water ensured a good quality of life. The natural resources helped them get more powerful. The Aztec army began to grow and conquer neighboring settlements, thanks to favorable living conditions. The Aztecs spent their time not only on the expansion of territories. They would give their people an education in homes and schools. People from wealthy families could study astronomy, philosophy, and history. Those who were less wealthy studied army affairs and handicraft work. Good education, discipline, and a rich harvest all year round. All this ensured the growth of the power of the Aztecs. They took over almost all the tribes in central Mexico in the 15th century, but not the Purapecha. This small state was formed in the 14th century. Some sources say they lived in South America, but then they immigrated to northern Mexico. But I guess we'll never know the truth. Still, they reportedly occupied the territory there, which is now the state of Michoacan. And there, for several decades, they founded their own empire, right in front of the Aztecs. Of course, this provoked prolonged and protracted conflicts. But the Aztecs never won these fights. The Puropecha continued to live and develop until the Spanish came to Mexico. The Puropecha alone could resist the Aztecs thanks to technology. They understood metalworking. They could melt and mix copper, bronze, and brass, and make high-precision labor tools such as shovels and axes. This technological advantage was one of the decisive factors in the conflict with the Aztecs. Another factor was the numerical advantage. During the 15th century, they had advanced technologies, a stable economy, a warm climate, and fertile lands. The population of their people was growing rapidly. And of course, for the Aztecs, it was a surprise. There are old records that talk about the attempts of the Aztecs to seize the territories of the Purupecha. When they came to the battlefield, they found huge armies of the enemy, exceeding twice the army of the Aztecs. It's unknown how the Purupecha would have developed further if the Spaniards hadn't come to them in the first half of the 16th century. Between 1521 and 1522, the Spaniards caught the ruler of the Purupecha and forced the empire to relinquish its power. In return, the Spaniards granted them autonomy and influence in the region. Also, they had one thing in common with the Spaniards. It was a conflict with one enemy, the Aztecs. The Purupecha continued to live as before and develop their culture. At the same time, they collaborated with the Spaniards, exchanging culture and traditions with them. The fall of the Purupecha had a lot to do with this collaboration. Spanish culture was integrated and then mixed with the Purupecha. The ancient traditions of the tribe were lost because of it. The greatness of the Purupecha might seem to have been forgotten. However, about 175,000 people are descendants of this tribe and speak its native language. It's also strange that in the state of Michoacan, there are large round pyramids made of volcanic stone but few people know who they belong to. Many believe that all this is the heritage of the Aztecs or Mayans, but the pyramids are relics of the Purupecha. The decline of the Aztec Empire was much more painful. 
as they were in constant conflict with the Spaniards. But, as historic studies have shown, it wasn't an open confrontation with the colonizers that destroyed the Aztecs, but European diseases. Aztec immunity wasn't ready for infection, which played a crucial role in the fight against Spain. By the way, the Aztecs and the Purupecha had many things in common with the Maya. The territory of Mexico and Central America was called Mesoamerica until the 16th century. So, the Maya had been the most dominant people here for almost 2,000 years. You've probably heard something about them or seen them in some movies. The famous Mayan calendar, pyramids, and things like that. But your expectations about this civilization may be wrong. It was a big state with laws, stone cities, and scientific discoveries. This empire was born and appeared around 1800 BCE and reached its peak in the 6th century. But then, something inexplicable happened to one of the most advanced civilizations on our planet. Unlike the Aztecs, scientists still can't explain what caused the decline of the Maya civilization. Let's try to figure it out for ourselves. The Maya Empire was located on the territory of modern Guatemala. Even at the dawn of this state, people were engaged in agriculture, growing corn, zucchini, and beans. Then they began to explore the mountainous terrain and build architectural monuments. They learned how to handle stone and began to raise their famous pyramids. Maya's influence was expanding. They made about 40 cities, and from 5 to 50,000 people lived in each. Every town was surrounded by plowed fields and fertile gardens. The entire Maya culture was supported by agriculture. At its peak, the Maya Empire numbered around 10 million people. Along with the population, scientific progress also grew. The Maya invented many smart things, but their most famous calendar had a complex computing system and counted the days 5,000 years ahead. They also developed a complex writing system that scientists could decipher only in the 20th century. And the Maya were the first to come up with the idea of using Ooh. cocoa beans to eat. Technically, they created chocolate. But then, something happened to this powerful civilization. In the 8th century, cities in the southern regions began to empty. By 900 CE, the decline of the Maya civilization began. In the 10th century, they completely stopped building anything out of stone. No one knows exactly why, but scientists have several ideas. The most popular one says that the Maya had exhausted all their natural resources. 10 million people aren't that much now, but it was about 5% of Earth's total population at that time. The nature of Mesoamerica couldn't feed so many people. Perhaps the harvest crisis began and ruined the economy of all cities. Another version says the Maya ruined themselves because of the struggle for power. Conflicts and fights in such a gigantic civilization could tear the empire apart from the inside. The rulers of some cities united to capture others. Perhaps the heirs of the ruling dynasty fought for the throne. But the main version involves weather changes. Long drought could destroy entire crops and dry up all lakes with fresh water. Perhaps there was no rain for several years, and the Maya couldn't support life in large cities. People abandoned their homes and split up all over Mesoamerica with other local tribes. Then, foreign conquerors came to the territory of the Maya Empire and their traditions mixed with different cultures. Today, several million descendants of the Maya live in Central America. About 40% of the population of Guatemala belongs to these people.